This week on the John Dulong Show, the World Cup final, which feels like it was forever ago, as well as the smoking bylaw here in Halifax, which seems real dumb. Let's start the show! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of the John Dulong Show. Welcome to episode 38, in fact. It's your weekly dose of the Friday afternoon fun times. I'm John Dulong. Come on in. Take a seat. I hope you're having a great week. I know it's, uh, it's been a warm one here in Halifax today as I'm recording this. Uh, nice, and, uh, nice and sunny, warm day. Um, I actually just got back from, I'm actually recording this, it's getting a little bit close to the wire even for me. I'm recording this on Friday, so uh, just a few hours before it hits the, uh, before it hits the airwaves, as it were. Um, just got back from a little uh, school trip. Um, we do field trips in my school. What of it? A uh, little school trip back from Africville, um, where we, uh, we didn't, went and did the, uh, the tour of the Africville Museum and, and walked around the park a little bit. Um, it actually happens to be the Africville reunion this, uh, this week coming. It starts tonight, actually. Uh, so if you're in the Halifax Regional Municipality area and you want to uh, go on down and check that out, it's open to the public, of course. Um, be really uh, really fun time from the sounds of things they've got a whole bunch of different activities uh, music um, game days family days kids days of course it ends with the big uh, church service next uh, next Sunday um, if you're not like if you're not from the area and you're not really familiar with the uh, with the Africville story I do highly suggest that you uh, you check it out we've studied it a little bit from um, from sort of the legal like land rights um, standpoint uh, when we were doing sort of uh, real estate law and uh it's a really like fascinating and heartbreaking story um you know and i i, I do i do find that i learn something new about africville absolutely every time that i uh that i do um that i do happen to l- like look into things i mean this was the first time that i had been to the museum um for example and i like i had never i had never realized that there were uh, there were also white families who did live in the africville area that lived in the community were a part of that community it was just primarily a uh, an african nova scotian uh um community but uh, uh, yeah there were there were white people who did uh, who did live and work and uh, and raise their families in africville as well who were affected um affected by the uh the city's neglect um of the uh of the community also just learned like i learned that they uh they had uh they had gotten uh, approval to uh to hook up the uh to hook up the community to uh to city water and sewage uh but it just sort of never happened uh, it was approved by council it was approved to go through but it just it never never happened so i don't know it's it's one of those things it's 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 uh one of the great sort of uh social shames i guess of uh, of halifax um but uh from like a historical standpoint from so you know i i i'm a bit of a, a of a history nerd at times um and from a historical standpoint it's it's just absolutely fascinating and uh, you know highly recommended um that you check it out check out uh you know even if you don't get down for the uh, for the uh, for the events um for the reunion of the uh, of the africville families uh of the community you know make sure that you uh that you get yourself out to the museum um you know it's it's really fascinating we we were very lucky to actually have a couple of former residents of africville uh there to uh to to talk to um which was fantastic so I, I just I really appreciate that if it, you know if this ever gets to the uh, to the ears of the Africville uh, of the Africville muse- Museum. Um, I had a fantastic time uh, learning this uh, this morning, and uh, I hope to I hope to go back. I like a good plaque. Um, it's <laughs> uh, the girlfriend makes fun of me for this, but I, I like a good plaque. I like a good museum. I like I like to read about things and to learn about things and to and to learn little facts about the world around me um, and the history of the, uh, the individual areas around me. Uh, and plaques are a really great way of doing that. Of course, museums are as well. So uh, I always enjoy a good museum visit. I always enjoy a good plaque. 
in case you were concerned that I wasn't a real nerd based on the fact that I've been talking non-stop about the World Cup over the last month. Uh, of course, the World Cup has come to an end. We're going to talk about that next up on the show here. Uh, I'm just going to give my last overall thoughts about the World Cup and uh, and football. It's, 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 football's about to, about to kick off once again. This Premier League season is less than a month away. I can't wait. After this. I genuinely feel like I do need to reestablish my nerd cred um, over the next few episodes, just because all I've been talking about is the uh, is the World Cup. I haven't brought up anything particularly nerdy. Um, I got the Adventure Zone uh, graphic novel just yesterday. Um, this is uh, the uh, the McElroy brothers and father, uh, based on their podcast, The Adventure Zone. Um, and it's a real play D and D. The first season, it was a real play D and D story. It's called the Balance Arc. Starts with here they be gerblins, and uh, I got the here there be gerblins graphic novel, and I'm really looking forward to getting the opportunity to sit down and really delve into and reading that. Um, I, I, man, I have wanted to play D and D again forever. Uh, it's been a long time since I played D&D. I used to play a little bit when I was in high school. I played a little bit uh, when I was in university initially. Uh, and it's been probably like eight years, maybe maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more. I can't really remember uh, since I last uh, since I last played. Um, and man, like I want to I want to play a game. I want to like run a campaign, but there's a lot of work involved in that. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe someday I'll, uh, you know, when I have only one job to do rather than uh rather than two um you know school and work maybe maybe at that point in time maybe i'll start a uh start a well third podcast at that point wink wink nudge nudge more news about that on the horizon maybe i'll start a third podcast maybe it'll be a uh a a, a D real play uh campaign type thing we'll see but uh, before we uh, before we get into any of that, long before we get into any of that, the uh, the World Cup, God, it feels like it was forever ago at this point. Like it just might just be me. Like I actually literally had to go back and double check that I hadn't already uh, already talked about the World Cup final because it felt like I had. Um, but uh, no, it was just the uh, the semifinals is just before the World Cup that the last episode of the show went up. Uh, England, quite unfortunately, did not managed to beat Belgium, Belgium finishing uh, third in the World Cup. Uh, and of course, it came down to Croatia versus France, and it ended 4-2, France winning the World Cup um, on the uh, on the balance of what was a really fantastic uh, final game. That's that's uh, takeaway number one that I want to I want to say from the uh, from the World Cup finals. It was just an absolutely uh, stunning game. Sometimes finals can be really quite cagey, uh, kind of boring affairs. But this was a this was just a really fantastic. I mean, six goals. It was the first time that there was six goals in like uh, I think it like might have been since '66. Um, first time that like it's been that many goals in a final uh since then um there was a um uh somewhat a couple of somewhat questionable calls that uh that gifted france their first two goals um the first uh the first goal was uh actually mario medjucic uh, zucic uh own goal um off of a uh, off of a free kick that i don't think was really that much of a foul but you know, whatever. Uh, and then, of course, there was uh, VAR rearing its head in the uh, in the final. Now, I think VAR is a fantastic tool, and honestly, I think that there is no, you know no, nothing really wrong with it being used here. There was certainly some question about whether or not there was a handball in the box. Um, I think that the call that the referee made was bad, but uh, people who have been blaming VAR are uh, are off base as far as I'm concerned. I don't think it was a penalty. I, I, I really genuinely don't think that it was i don't think that that uh that the uh croatian player's hand was in a bad position it wasn't not in an unnatural position so i don't think it was a handball um but 
I don't know. There's something to be said about like you know not blaming the actual technology. Um, you know, even Perisic and uh, Mario Van Zuzic, um Mario, um, I and I'm mispronouncing that name because that's what I do on this show. Um, Mario Mandzukic uh, becoming the first player to score uh, both an own goal and a uh, and a goal for his own team um, in a World Cup, as I understand it, World Cup final. Uh, Paul Pogba, man, Jesus Christ, fifty nine minute blaster from outside of the outside of the box, just an absolute stunner of a goal, and um, Kylian Mbappe put it completely out of uh, out of reach, um, scoring. Uh, scoring a goal in the 65th minute. Uh, Manjucic's goal um, was in the 69th minute to, br- to bring it to 4-2. Um, it was uh, a little, I don't know, maybe it's something about goalkeepers named Loris or Loris. Um, Hugo Loris uh, just sort of released the ball directly into Mario's path, and like it was a pretty easy finish from there. Um I don't know. It was anyhow. It was a, it was a really great goal. Uh, really great. Uh, really great game. Rather, um, start to finish. I thought that it was uh, that it was just really good. And Croatia played uh, their absolute hearts out. They were probably probably the better team on the day, uh, but for a couple of calls going the other way, uh, it may have gone to uh, it may have gone to extra time. And well, Croatia in extra time, man. Like. It's hard to it's hard to bet against them at that point. Uh, I think like it was a real coming out party for Croatia. Uh, whether or not you'll see them uh, back at this level again, necessarily, eh, you know, less less likely. Maybe you know some of their core players are kind of aging out. Uh, but honestly, like I think like nothing uh, nothing to be ashamed about there from Croatia's uh, standpoint. Um, one last thing that I wanted to say about the about the World Cup. Um, I think that uh, the what this World Cup has sort of taught us more so than anything else is that uh, there is no value in just rolling over and uh, and playing to a team's reputation. Um, you know uh, the way that uh, the way that I had this World Cup uh, shaking out is that we there there was going to be a final of uh, of Brazil versus Germany. Uh, and Germany didn't even make it out of the groups, uh, and that was just based on the fact that uh, the the teams in Germany's group that uh, that weren't supposed to go anywhere played their friggin' hearts out. Like Sweden topped the group in the end. South Korea ta- went above Germany. Germany finished last in the group. Uh, of course, they were always going to have some. There was always going to be a challenge from Mexico, but Mexico uh, also also making out of the group along with Sweden. It wasn't the way that things were supposed to go. Now, Brazil's group went a little bit more. Uh, I would argue to uh, to type. It was Brazil, Switzerland. Honestly, I kind of thought Serbia was going to sneak in there for the second part, uh, but uh, Brazil, Switzerland, go on through and uh, and make it through to the uh, to the knockout rounds. But then Brazil gets knocked out by Belgium in the corner quarterfinals. Like it, it's it's one of these things where if if you if you allow a team's reputation of being a, a, a massive uh, a massive team to to really strike at your core, uh, if you allow your own reputation to really strike at your core, that's when th- when problems start to arise. I mean, England uh, England really outperformed what they were supposed to do like i mean they were not supposed to make it to uh to the semifinals and then to the third place match i had them personally i had them going out in the round of 16 like uh or actually i might have made them go to the quarters in my in my bracket i can't really remember but the point is is like it's hard to it's hard to have it's hard to find success um if you uh if you allow sort of preordained narratives to uh to dominate, uh, to dominate your belief and to dominate your your play, I guess. Uh, just some of these some of these teams that were supposed to play it's just sort of timid, um, counterattacking, you know, park the bus type Mourinho ball. They didn't, and lo and behold, they they went farther in this tournament than they were ever supposed to. And I thought it was a really fantastic, uh, really fantastic show of sport um, this World Cup. And uh, now we can go back to. Uh, being feeling uncomfortable about both FIFA and Russia, we can we can go back to uh, to feeling the way that we should feel about these things. We put all those feelings aside during the actual World Cup. We enjoy the game, uh, and then we go back to the fact that Russia 
uh, is a destabilizing force in the world uh, and not good for uh, for world democracy uh, and Western liberal democracies, and that FIFA is a corrupt, um, gangster-run organization that... Uh,